Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and this is the second video in the electricity series of inductors, and it is about a new concept called flux. We're going to look at um, how we, we dealt with generating voltage in level 2 very quickly. And then this new idea of flux, um, magnetic flux density, and finally how we calculate flux. So in level 2, what we had, we had some very basic situations where we had a wire that we dragged through a magnetic field. So all those dots there in the picture are um, me indicating that's a magnetic field coming out of the page. We dragged this wire through, um, and some of you learned the way that if the wire cuts the field lines, it generates a voltage. We could work out which way the voltage was induced, which is positive and negative, and then we could hook up a, another wire and make a circuit and work out how the current was flowing when we had this wire being dragged through, a nice straight wire. We have more complicated situations this year, so we don't have any straight lines because we're dealing with this curved um, thing. And generally, the way we make voltage is we move a magnet in and out of this coil. So in moving a magnet in and out of the coil, that generates the voltage. Um, and so we need a new model, a new way of dealing with this, because just having the wire being dragged across the magnetic field um, is a bit hard. So this new idea is this thing called magnetic flux. So flux effectively is the number of field lines through a given area. And so what do you mean by area? An area is whatever area you choose. So I could choose this little here, put a nice little square, and if I wanted to look at that area, I'd just simply sort of count the field lines that are going through it. So let's zoom in on that little box I've made on the right there, and it looks like this, and you can see there's about um, eight field lines going through it. Now that doesn't mean I have eight flux because the field lines I drew are arbitrary. But what it means is the more field lines that go through, the more flux. The less field lines that go through, the less flux. Okay, so flux is effectively counting those field lines that go through. It's really important that you realize that they go through at 90 degrees. 90 degrees to the, um, to the surface, if you imagine a surface to that area. So why do we even care about magnetic flux? Well, when we're changing this um, magnet, pulling it in, putting it in, and pulling it out of a coil. What we're doing is we're changing the amount of flux that's going through the coil. So you can see when the magnet's far away, I've sort of just done a diagram here on the left-hand side, and it looks like there's only sort of one line of flux going through. When the magnets move closer, and, and the, much closer to the coil, you can see there's a lot more lines of field going through, so therefore there's more flux. So we go from not much flux to a lot of flux. So moving it closer and further, changes the lines of field going through the coil which is the effectively the same as changing flux and you're going to learn in videos um, coming up that it's not how much flux there is in the coil that's important but changing flux is so important changing from not much to a lot changing from a lot to not much that's what generates electricity and we're going to do a whole video on changing flux but you need to know what flux is so that we can investigate what it means to change flux so we, we can calculate um, flux, and flux is given by the symbol um, phi, which is a, a Greek symbol, and it's equal to B times A, so B is the magnetic field strength, you met let that last year, it's in Tesla. Because we, we call this um, flux, we sometimes can rearrange the formula to say, well, what does B mean? And if you go flux divided by area, it equals B, and so they sometimes rename B as magnetic flux density, and for this year level, in fact, most of the way through university, Magnetic flux density is just the magnetic field. So if you've ever seen that, it's just another way of writing magnetic field. Uh, it means something slightly different when you get far more complicated, but we're going to stay out of that for now. A is the area, and the units for magnetic flux are in Weber's. Right? So you just take the, the amount of magnetic field strength going through an area. Remember, field lines have to be 90 degrees to the surface of the area. So for example, um, we could work out some flux here. But if I rotated that um, area and said I want to look at the flux now through this area, exactly the same size but just rotated, there's no flux because those field lines are not going 90 degrees to the surface of that area. Right, so zero flux there. So in summary, um, magnetic flux is effectively the amount of field lines that are going through an area. Right, So you calculate from field times the area. The units of a Weber um, and field lines must be 90 degrees to the surface. And in the next video we're going to go into a sort of a deep dive why changing flux is important and, and how that um, helps us to calculate how much electricity has been generated. So 90 degrees to the surface, so when it's this way we get lots of flux, this way we get not much flux or zero flux completely.